to another video here with Crafty Mama. Um, so we do have a highly requested uh, tutorial here today. I'm going to be showing you guys how I use the cinch machine to buy my journals and my planners. Um, so I'm going to go into detail step by step where I got everything from and how to uh, use this machine. So if that's something you like to learn, go ahead and stick around. Okay, so we're just going to jump right into it. Um, this is the cinch machine that I have. Um, I, I think there's only one machine called the cinch. Um, there's other binding machines out there, but I'm not familiar with them. This is the only one that I've had. This is the only one that I use. I did get it off of Amazon um, probably about a month or so ago, maybe six weeks ago. I'm not sure if Amazon still has them. I heard they were sold out. Um, but that's where I got mine from. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and get started and show you guys how to do this so this is the journal we're going to be binding today this is a journal that i created that i've made and i sell on my website pre-made this is the cover now for my cover this one is laminated so i printed it on cardstock and then i laminated it but it is front and back and i know people always get the questions how do you remove the white border as you can see, mine does have a white border, but because the colors on my cover are very light and pink, you can barely see it, um, and it's really not that noticeable. I do have a, co a cover that's like black and red. That one is a little bit more noticeable on that one just because they're darker. the colors are darker. Um, but for this specific co uh, cover, I didn't think it, I don't think it looks that bad because it's because the colors are lighter. But this is the cover. And this is the, you know, this journal belongs to page. And then these are just the pages that, you know, you write on. And they are, these are also front and back. Okay. These are the pages. And then this is the back cover. Also, this was printed on cardstock and then laminated. Now, this is just a journal for my um, for my planner. Sometimes what I'll do is um, I'll use chipboard. Um, and then for the front cover, one thing that I've noticed that kind of works, you can't laminate chipboard. I tried it. It doesn't fit. So what I do is I'll use the chipboard. I'll print the cover on sticker paper. And then I'll put the sticker paper on the front of the chipboard. And then I take these um, self-seal laminating sheets and I'll put it on the front cover so that you still get that glossy look. Um, and it only laminates one side. Okay. Those work really well. I'll probably do another video and show you guys exactly how I use these on the chipboard. Um... To get that laminated look okay um so we're just gonna go ahead and get started with the cinch here so right here on the front you have to like know what this is so this is an eight and a half by eleven okay so on here it's you have you look up the inches that it is mine is um and it's the long way not the short way so this is eleven this is eight and a half by eleven so because you're going to be punching the holes on this side, you're going to take the inches here and look it up on here. So this is going to be 11 inches. So on here, the cinch is telling me that for 11 inches, you're going to pull out peg number 10. And I'll show you what that means. Okay. So when I laminate, or when, I'm sorry, when I bind, I, I do the laminated pages separately. Just because, I don't know why, it's, it's kind of harder if you do the laminated with the non-laminated pages. So I always do, um, a matter of fact, I can do both of these at the same time. I only do maybe two to three laminated pages. So this is going to be my front cover. This is my back cover. For my back cover, obviously I want to laminate it on this side. Okay, so you're just going to stick it in there. 
You're gonna make sure it's pushed all the way to the back so that your holes are nice and clean. Make sure it's even. Make sure all your pegs are pushed in and then you're just gonna push it down. And there's your holes, okay? Now to do the top, the top holes, you're gonna pull it all the way down like this. You're gonna pull it all the way down. Now here's where this comes into play. You're gonna make sure it's lined up. Right here, there's a little uh, lever. You push it down and it holds it in place for you. See, now I can't move it. It just holds it down in place for you. Now, because this was 11 inches, this told us that we have to pull out peg 10. So here, we're gonna pull out peg 10. And that's where the hole punch is gonna stop. So all of these are gonna punch, this is not going to punch, and these are not going to punch. And I'll show you what it looks like. Now see how that's nice and clean? If I would have left this 10 peg in, it would have punched a half a hole right here at the very top. So that's why it's important to measure it and make sure you know which peg you're gonna pull out and don't forget to pull it out when you're doing your top punches so that you don't get that extra hole. It's, and it's not even gonna be a full hole. It's gonna be just a half a punch up here and you don't want that. You want it nice and clean like that. Okay, so now we have our front and our back cover done. You're just gonna push that back in and then you're gonna grab some papers, not too many, and you're just gonna continue on. There's our holes. You're gonna pull it down. You're gonna lock this into place. See, now I can't move it. You're gonna pull out your 10 peg, and then you're gonna continue. I'm dropping stuff left and right. Push your 10 peg back in, unlock it, and there's your holes. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna finish uh, punching these and then I'm gonna come back and we'll, and we'll uh, finish up. All right guys, I'm back. I do have all of my holes punched now. Um, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna bind it. Now these, this is the coil that I have. Um, it's the same brand as the cinch. It's, uh, what is it? We are memory keepers cinch coils. I got these from, um, I want to say I got these from Amazon as well. Um, they do have them at Hobby Lobby. Um, so I have I have a whole bunch of these coils. Like half of them I got from Hobby Lobby. The other half I got from Amazon. So either one, um, either website you can get the coils from. Okay. So this is where you're going to put your coil right here. You're just going to stick it on here like that. And then you're going to take your pages and you are going to line it up with the, uh, the bottom one. Sorry, I'm trying to do this backwards. I got to turn it around so I can see. Starting with the back cover first. Up. And you're 
working, like I said, from back to front. So you're starting with the back cover and you're working your way towards the front cover. Okay. Now you have it, all the pages on the coil. And now you just, I just kind of do a quick flip through to make sure none of the pages are backwards or got messed up. You got your front cover, looks good. You got your back cover on right, looks good, okay? So now you're gonna close this up and you use the uh, machine to do that as well. So right here at the top, um, it has uh, numbers here. You're gonna base where you place this based on um, the size of your wires. So my these ones are three quarters of an inch. So right now I have it on five eighths. We're just gonna move it to up to three quarters. And this is this right here is now sitting on three quarters of an inch. Okay. Then you're gonna take your machine. Um, I'm sorry, not your machine. You're gonna take your coil. You're gonna make sure it's lined up. Everything is right. And then you're gonna take this and you're gonna stick it in here and you're gonna push it to the back and make sure it's lined up and you're gonna push it down. Okay, then you're gonna move it up to the top, push it to the back, make sure it's lined up and push it down. Okay. And then I just move it down a touch. I don't go all the way to five eighths. I just move it down just a hair. And then I redo it. Cause I wanna make sure it's nice and secure. Okay. And I wanna make sure it's nice and, you know, bound properly and it's secure. Now you're gonna have an extra piece. We're gonna cut that off. Okay, so now see how it's nice and secure in there. So when you go to open it, it opens nice and clean. Okay, all right, and then for this little extra piece, um, you are just going to get some um scissors or the wire cutters. It looks like somebody stole my scissors out of here. It's probably my husband. Um, I'll be right back. I gotta go grab my scissors. Okay, I'm back. These are um, some heavy duty. Um, I, I think they're the jewelry wire cutters. I'm not sure, I got them from um, Target. But you're just gonna cut this extra piece off. Okay? And then this little corner right here, it's a little sharp after you've cut it. So I kinda just take it and tuck it underneath that first coil. Okay, I just push it down and tuck it under the first coil so that, you know, it doesn't scratch or anything like that. And it's nice and secure, okay? And there's your coils, nice and closed, clean, and you can open your book, you know, just like you would with a store-bought one. Okay, and that is how you use the cinch. That's it, guys. Um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, go ahead and drop a comment down below. 
Um, if you have any requests for any other videos, definitely let me know and I'll try to get those out for you. Um, I hope everybody's being safe. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Bye.